Good morning. We are excited to uh, be here again, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I don't have any jokes this morning, uh, Yosef and George. Uh, I didn't hit a hole in one yesterday uh, because I didn't play golf. Mm -hmm. So, uh, at any rate, thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, we wanted to once again come and uh, take a moment to give an update after having not only received updated information from the governor, uh, but our federal partners as well. And so I began our comments this morning with not only uh, welcoming those of you who are joining us uh, by social media through Facebook, but more importantly, uh, to our media partners who have taken an opportunity to come. Once again, we're joined by our EMA director, Chief Chris James. We're also joined by our sheriff, Sheriff Richard Roundtree, and Dr. Stephen Goggins, from the State Department of Public Health here in Augusta. I began my comments this morning also, uh, somewhat anecdotally, to tell you that this has had a toll on all of us. Uh, while we have been front facing in terms of uh, what we see on the ground and our roles as elected officials or as appointed officials, uh, this has had a toll on all of us. Uh, most recently, a very, very dear friend of mine uh, lost two family members within 24 hours of one another in New York City as a result of COVID-19. Here in the local Augusta community, uh, we have been met with several very, very close friends of ours who are still battling the coronavirus here in the city. And so uh, while we come and have these press conferences, we're not doing so uh, just because we can, but because of our grave concern and care for this community and what it means to all of us. And so on yesterday, Governor Kemp delivered another address uh, to the citizens of the state of Georgia. Uh, during that, Governor Kemp uh, noted a few things that have importance to us in Augusta. Uh, number one, uh, the governor indicated that we're seeing record highs in testing, uh, thanks to Augusta University and private and local health officials. Uh, the testing capacity in the state of Georgia has now doubled and over 217,000 tests uh, have been reported on the state's website. What I have consistently said, and those who follow me in my comments have said, is that if we're going to stop the spread of the virus and flatten the curve, we have to test, we have to trace, we have to treat, and then we have to isolate. And I will tell you that we have to do those things, and we have to do them consistently. It's not enough for us to just test and be excited about the fact that we're able to do more testing, but we've got to trace those folks who have come in contact with individuals who come and have tested positive. We've then got to make sure that we treat. I want to resoundingly say to those of you Augustans and those who are across the CSRA, while we may be able to test, we may be able to trace, and we certainly can isolate, we do not have a vaccine for the coronavirus. And that's extremely important, which is why conversations like this are equally important and for us to be consistent in those conversations about what each and every one of you as citizens, as business owners and residents of Augusta Richmond County must do and going forward. The governor also indicated that uh, we, as we continue to ramp up, there are some additional uh, resources that are available to us. Uh, out of 23 states with more than 5 million people, we're now 12th in per capita testing. I think that's certainly good, and I want to say uh, kudos and applaud the governor uh, for his continued efforts in terms of trying to work with resources and organizations across the state of Georgia. I think that's what we need to see. We want to see that uh, in even greater measure. The Department of Community Health has begun planning for in-person inspections of long-term care facilities to assist with infection control, monitoring, and compliance. To date, the Department of Community Health has deployed 125 healthcare professionals to skilled nursing facilities, which now brings me to where we are in Augusta. In Augusta, Georgia, it's vitally important for every one of you as we have reopened businesses to do the following. As we see the continued reopening and expansion of people going back to what they perceived as what was once normal, we are extremely concerned at the lack of social distancing, at the lack of face coverings and masks that people are in general population uh, operating in. 
uh, if we're going to flatten the curve and stop the spread of the virus, as citizens, we're expecting you to do the following. Number one, practice safe social distancing. Number two, if you go out in the general public, you should put on a face covering or mask. And thirdly, if you become sick, stay at home, call your doctor and get immediate care. And you can do that through the AU Health Augusta Express Care uh, app. If you go to Google Store or Apple Store, you can download that app and they can begin the first line of getting you in front of a doctor. I want to say that again. If you are going to come out in the general public, you must safely social distance yourself. Secondly, you should put on a mask or face covering if you're in the general public. Our businesses are following the governor's executive order guides and guidelines that have been provided to barbershops, hair salons, nail stylists, and those businesses that were deemed non-essential that have since reopened and it is vitally important for you to do that. Concerning the local Augusta government facilities and reopening plan, on this past Tuesday, the commission adopted a three-phased approach to provide safety for city and government employees and the general community that we serve who may enter into our buildings. I want to expressly thank our team for working on that. Uh, it is a continued work in progress as we see the phased in implementation of that. In phase one, it was communicated and there was some level of miscommunication uh, from the uh, local paper, but I want to set the record straight. Uh, we're beginning phase one on May the 12th. Uh, that's where 25% additional members of our workforce will return to work. It is during that time that physical barriers will be put in place as needed, in particular in the tax commissioner's office planning and development, license and inspections, and those front-facing organizations to include water and utilities where people walk in and pay their bills. All those entering the municipal building will be required to have a mask on at all times and to sanitize their hands upon entry. I, me I mentioned again those organizations that are front-facing to the public, our tax commissioner's office, our tax assessor's office, human resources, engineering, utilities, environmental services, our marshal's office. Uh, those front-facing facilities or departments will be opening. Phase two opening will begin on May the 18th. That is where we will bring an additional 25% of our workforce to assist in serving the general public with some staff remaining in a telework phase. I want to reiterate, we will continue to telework through this pandemic until further notice. It's not required that all 2,700, 2,800 employees of Augusta Richmond County come back into the building or buildings that we have. Uh, it is equally important for us not only to be concerned about the general public, uh, public, but to also be concerned about those employees who suit up every single day, they leave their families, they come to work safely, and they want to return safely. And we're gonna give them every opportunity to do that because they are on the front lines and have been on the front lines since the beginning of this conversation in early March. Again, that's an additional 25% of our workforce will be back into the buildings. Many will be teleworking. Those individuals will be required to wear a mask upon entering the building. And we will then move to phase one. Phase one is January, uh, June 1st. Again, let me clarify, phase three Phases one, two, and three. Phase three is where we will effectively be at almost 100% of our workforce being back in place, which means that some of them will continue to be teleworking, but they will be providing full services from a teleworking perspective. That's June 1. That's where all staff will continue to work, and some of those will be provided telework options available as needed. Uh, that includes our library. We will reopen our library on June 1. That is a facility that provides tremendous value to our community in terms of quality of life, uh, but it is also a facility where we know across the community individuals come, they congregate, and we will have those same safety measures in place uh, for those individuals who will be entering the library. 
we'll also be having a phased in approach to certain recreation facilities that very well may open during that time as well. Our parks have been open throughout this conversation since early March and they will continue to be open. Uh, our parks across Augusta. I want everyone to be aware that this reopening plan is a fluid plan uh, with local government reopening. Uh, it's subject to change at any time in order to protect the health and welfare of our entire community. That's extremely important to protect the health, welfare, and community and of our entire community. Regarding the Augusta Judicial Center, uh, Chief Justice Harold Melton has extended the judicial state of emergency for all of Georgia through June the 12th. Uh, those matters that are critical or essential in nature, temporary protective orders, and those things will continue to be done. Uh, Chief Judge Carl Brown and his team are working diligently to make sure that those critical uh, items that need to be taken care of during this time will continue to do so. Currently, there are 438 confirmed positive cases in Augusta, Richmond County. There have been 15 deaths. In the state of Georgia, there are 31,722 confirmed cases and almost 1,400 deaths in the state of Georgia. The governor and Commissioner Toomey have indicated that as testing goes up, we will continue to see an increase in terms of positive cases. And while that's true, we still have to do our part if we're going to see the stopping of the spread of the virus and the flattening of the curve. And so I want to reiterate these things before our sheriff comes forward. And that is the opening of the economy does not mean that we should return to the way that we were. I want to say that again, the opening of the economy. What Augustans have to recognize is that we are a border state and we are a border community. Our neighbors in South Carolina have been traveling back and forth across state lines since the point in time that we opened. And without any measures uh, of knowing who's positive and who's not, or who's asymptomatic and may potentially be carrying the virus, I need you to not only practice safe social distancing, to put on a face covering or a mask if you're out in the general public. And that's extremely important if we're going to keep a safe community. The safety and the well-being of our citizens continues to be our number one concern and priority. And we want to do everything that we can once again to flatten the curve. I want to encourage all Augustans to take this coronavirus seriously. It is a silent and a very violent killer. We've used terms, and I've heard the governor use terms that we're at a war. Uh, it's very difficult to defeat an enemy you don't see. And so if you put a mask on and you make sure that you're practicing safe social distancing, we can keep Augustans safe. I want to reiterate a few things that I mentioned from last week. The vulnerable populations continue to have to shelter in place until June the 12th. Those vulnerable populations are those who are 65 years of age or older, individuals living in a nursing home, a long-term care facility, people with chronic lung disease, people with moderate to severe asthma, people with severe heart disease, and those individuals who are immunocompromised, people with class two or severe obesity, and without question, individuals who are dealing with diabetes, liver disease, or chronic kidney disease undergoing dialysis. It's interesting, and I said this last week, that those health care concerns, those underlying conditions, disproportionately affect members of black and brown communities, in particular folks who are African American. And so for those of you who are out in the community, those of you who are looking for an opportunity to hang out at Twin Peaks, for those of you who are looking for opportunities to just go back to doing what you've always done, I want to reiterate once again, you need to practice safe social distancing and you need to stay out of those places of where people are gathering in groups larger than 10 and spreading the virus. I'm asking, I'm urging, I'm pleading with my fellow Augustans and those who travel across our state lines that if you're coming into the city of Augusta, Georgia, practice safe social distancing, put on a face covering or a mask, and make sure that you're helping us to keep people safe in our community. 
COVID-19 is a health care crisis that's irrespective of color, race, gender, or political party. It is not Republican nor Democrat. It is not black or white. It is a virus, and it affects people 15, 59, 100, 99, and even 12 years old. We don't want that to be you. We want to keep people safe. Over the next several months, as we continue to see the expansion of businesses opening and returning to some sense of normalcy while putting in place the guidelines that the governor's office in concert with the Department of Public Health have provided, I want to mention a few events that we are looking out for, and that is the Arts and Hearts International Festival, Ironman 70.3, and of course, the Masters Golf Tournament. These are things that we're continuing to monitor as we track towards uh, the fall. And without question, we're going to be continuing our conversations with those entities and organizations who put those events on. And we know that each of them are international in nature. And as we see America taking steps to try to stop the spread of the virus and flatten the curve, we see our European friends uh, becoming a hot spot once again. And many of those folks travel into America and without question to Augusta for these events. And so with that, I'll turn it over to our sheriff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. Again, I'm here to discuss the law enforcement component as it relates to how we're dealing with the COVID-19 crisis here in Richmond County. Uh, but before I start, I do want to say um, uh, to all the members of the Richmond County Sheriff's Office, um, the incredible job that they have done throughout this process, um, every task that we have added and the additional duties that we have added um, to them and tasked them to do while still serving the public and still maintaining a jail population of roughly a 1,000 inmates um, has been extraordinary. And I think sometimes people forget the fact um, that we are dealing with this COVID-19 crisis, but we're still having to be on the front lines every day along with other first responders and our healthcare workers. But as the leader of that agency, I do want to say how extremely proud I am of each and every one of those individuals. Uh, we're still uh, analyzing uh, crime numbers and crime calls uh, um, since we've opened up um, based on the governor's order. Um, as we also, as we transition back into a working uh, community, we start starting to see again an increase in traffic flow. This past weekend was a significant increase from the weeks prior to. Um, it's to be expected because the order has lifted, but it was um, a higher number than we had anticipated that first week, which does cause us some concerns, not only for the fact of just traffic-related incidents. Um, that we had pretty much relatively um, decreased um, as far as DUIs, um, speeding, and the moving violations and accidents. Um, now we're starting to see just in a week those numbers start to significantly increase as more cars have been on the roadway. So we do want the citizens to be mindful that we know that you have been um, temporarily um, isolated for a period of time but if it's not necessary for you to travel on the streets of Augusta, please do not do so unless it's necessary. We're also finding that uh, most of our citizens and businesses have been in compliance uh, on the governor's orders. Uh, we continue to get phone calls, which again, I said last week, is extremely encouraging to the fact that they want to reach out and be as safe as they possibly can. We've had no calls of incidents of anyone that feels they have violated um, the order because most businesses, again, have taken the proactive step of contacting various um, agencies to make sure they are in compliance. We do, however, like the mayor has mentioned, are still seeing um, these large groups and gatherings this past weekend. Um, we're responding to several house parties uh, where people have blocked the street, large gatherings, cookouts of that nature. We know those things come with the summer, um, but again, in the midst of this crisis, it is becoming extremely more and more dangerous. And again, it's putting these first responders at risk. As I continue to say every day, 
that if you remove a first responder, um, that is a resource that this community has lost for a minimum of 14 days. I mean, it's not longer if, in fact, um, they have, in fact, contracted the, the virus based on interacting with the public. With a population of our size, we have been extremely fortunate, extremely fortunate with the amount of calls that we do in this particular area and encounters that we have had a very, very insignificant amount of cases based on the number of deputies and calls um, that we've gotten. But these groups, again, pose a danger, not only to themselves, but to these first responders that we have to respond to these calls. Uh, again, like the mayor mentioned, uh, we had an incident over the weekend in one of our parking lots um, off Washington Road where over 100 cars had assembled um, in the parking lot gathering. Uh, one of the unintended consequences that we spoke for about that the majority of the tags were from other states, that they were not Richmond County or Georgia tags. That is concerning to us um, because of the fact that we are open for business and we're trying to be proactive as a county that these individuals are coming and using Richmond County as a haven not to perform any duties of the fact of revenue or economic development, but to use it as a gathering place because there are limitations in their particular perspective. So this is something that we will definitely um, look at and we are monitoring very, very closely. As I mentioned, the, as the temperatures rise, we know that the need <coughs> to get outside um, is great. And we have absolutely no issues with that, as long as you're doing it in a safe manner. Um, families can gather, um, but again, you do not have to have uh, friends and neighbors um, at that gathering. Um, you have your family and you want to get together and celebrate outside, practice social distance within that fact, but it becomes an issue when we have people uh, blocking streets, blocking driveways, and just a large number of people gathered in a small, confined uh, yard. So that is something that we definitely want the citizens of Richmond County to be mindful of. We have not seen a significant increase in domestic violence cases, but we are still, as I stated before, responding to disturbances and loud music calls. That goes, in fact, with the gathering. Those go hand in hand. And each time we get those calls, we have to respond. So we're asking now that if we can reduce those amount of calls, those proactive patrols can be used in other avenues to reduce crime in Richmond County. Because even though we said that traffic incidents are down, violent crime and property crime still exists in Richmond County. We are the second largest city in the state of Georgia. Crime has not stopped. Um, certain levels of crime have dec decreased just because of the amount of activity, but that too we have seen that our numbers of arrests just in the last week have also started to increase, um, which is also concerning to us. And these are things that we think are preventable acts. Finally, um, we are personally making contact with all bar owners in anticipation of the May 14th opening to make sure um, that they follow the guidelines. We're going to be extremely firm uh, with our bars as they open because of the unintended consequence, which I mentioned earlier, that we do anticipate res residents from outside Richmond County immediately flocking to these establishments that have been closed for so long. So we're personally making contact with every bar in Richmond County, especially the ones who employ off-duty deputies. And my deputies have been instructed that the moment they do not follow compliance, that that establishment is to be shut down for that evening. We're telling this now in anticipation of the May 14th. And like I said, we are not using this as a threat. We're doing this as a measure to let them know that we want them to open safely for the citizens of Richmond County and those who may come from other counties. So. We will be in the next week going out and checking off on every one of them so no one would say that they have not been warned or advised of the action that we're going to take surrounding our bars in anticipation um, of their opening. Lastly, again, as I was saying, the social distancing is the, going to be the key. We need to um, have every one of our first responders on the front lines, every one of our health care workers on the front line, in place. And we're human to the fact that our families back home that we lead, um, a lot of, of our employees have children. Child care issue has been an issue. We've worked around that to make them come to work. So we are proud to say that we have been at 100% capacity 
since day one of this COVID-19 emergency. Uh, we didn't have an abuse of sick time or any of that nature, and we also haven't been able to have to, to use an abundance of overtime based on the resources that everyone has been coming to work and doing their job diligently. So as we begin to phase open, uh, we will continue to do that, but we do need the public's help. This is us, your law enforcement entity. We are law enforcement, but we are a service agency. We're asking you to help us, help us keep this community and continue to keep this community safe. If you look at the numbers and some of the troubles that other communities have had throughout the nation, Richmond County has done a phenomenal, a phenomenal job um, based on the resources and the amount of people that we have. And there's no time now to take our foot off uh, the accelerator when it comes to keeping these measures in place. So again, thank you all, um, and thank the citizens of Augusta, and especially the first responders and our health care workers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. Again, I'd like to express my thanks to Mayor Davis for the chance to come and, and provide some public health information to the community. I wanted to add my voice to this call for wearing masks and face coverings when you go out in public. This is something that the governor, the commissioner of the Department of Public Health, Dr. Toomey, and the mayor have all recommended, and it is a very important part of what we can all do to help limit spread. Uh, a mask provides protection to the wearer depending on what type it is, but people don't necessarily know that a mask provides protection to everyone else that they're around as well, and that is one of the things that makes it really valuable. Any kind of mask, a uh, cloth face covering, acts like you're covering every cough, every sneeze automatically. It provides significant benefit preventing you, should you be infected, from spreading coronavirus to others that you are with. And that includes people who are at higher risk. So those folks still have to go out and buy groceries and do other essential activities. If they are there and you're wearing a mask, you're providing protection for them as well. And so that's a huge benefit. If you combine that with the hand hygiene, with the physical six foot distancing and the other things we've recommended, we really can make a difference just with those measures in community spread. So I want to encourage everyone to do that whenever they have to go out. As far as an update on testing, Dr. Toomey set uh, an aggressive target about 10 days ago of 100,000 tests in the state of Georgia over 10 days. And we have gotten today that we are now at 108,000 tests over that time. And that is just a, it's a tremendous volume um, and increase over the capacity we had before. That includes public health plus private providers. It's across the state. Um, but it does show the increase in ability to test in those places. And don't forget the lab capacity to analyze them and all the other parts of the process that it takes to make those successful. So that is great. And I think it shows that we are going to be able to do um, lots of tests over the next couple weeks and months. So also, there was an announcement yesterday, as the mayor mentioned, um, with the governor's speech that we want to encourage anyone who wants a test to call and schedule for a test. So if you're symptomatic, you're in a high risk group, we definitely want to encourage you to do so. But even if you're not and you feel like you would benefit from a test, we want to encourage you to call and, and arrange to schedule one. And lastly, um, Chief James will provide much more information, but just want to say what a success I thought la the, the, the Fire Station 1 testing event was. We tested almost double what was our original uh, maximum number of people, and that was just due to the, uh, the hard work of all the staff that were there. They put in a tremendous day, uh, stayed much longer than it was planned just to serve all of those people, and we've got further events planned and with more capacity because it, it's uh, obvious that there's a demand and we really want to try to bring testing to anyone who feels like they need it. Um, and then our update on uh, contact tracing. So we have in our district had a, a little under 900 cases of coronavirus and that's if you count all the counties that are part of the 
East Central Health District, all 13 counties. We have done a case investigation and epidemiological follow-up on every single one of those cases. So that team has done tremendous work and they continue to keep up with all the cases as they come in daily. At the same time, um, we are preparing to add a workforce across the state. It'll be many hundreds here. Um, we've got an initial group that I think we'll start within the next couple of weeks to add to our team. Um, we are just preparing for the fact that increased testing is likely to mean increased case numbers and we want to be ready so that we can continue to provide that kind of timely follow-up and um, advice that we're doing with this epi work. And so we're going to uh, be able to do that with our own folks and some others that we're bringing on to do this, uh, do this work. Uh, that's all I have for today. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, to kind of reiterate what, what the sheriff said, uh, you know, as the fire chief as well, to say, uh, to take a moment to recognize those firefighters and EMTs. Uh, we are the, the largest uh, fire service in this region and uh, those guys are doing an outstanding job. Uh, luckily to this point we have had no cases on the fire department. We've had people that have had to be observed and tested um, but the firefighters have been doing an outstanding job in our EMTs as far as wearing necessary PPEs Rob, and, they, and they've actually responded and treated COVID positive patients uh, but their discipline in wearing the appropriate PPEs has allowed us to go to this point and not have any cases. And that goes to their discipline, their willing to follow the rules so that they can stay at work and serve those citizens. Um, just as our law enforcement, we as well have been at 800%. Um, uh, overtime has been very rarely used during this period because employee has been employees have been showing up to work, following the rules, staying healthy so that they could perform their duties. Uh, and as the mayor and, and the sheriff and, and Dr. Goggins have stated, by our community following those rules, by them staying safe, it assists those essential workers in staying safe as well. Um, we saw a huge success in our first COVID-19 testing at station uh, one, uh, we were expecting and we had prepared for approximately uh, 150 on the top end and actually thought that we may have about 60 or 70 folks show up that day. Uh, we ended up testing 267 citizens with another around 110 on a list to be first to be tested at our next testing next Friday. Uh, we knew that there was a need for testing um, in Augusta in the communities where people uh, walk. Um, and uh, we saw that, you know, how are we going to flatten this curve? And we keep saying flatten the curve. And, and, but we've had this feeling that we have a huge part of the community that's not being tested. Uh, <clears throat> so we felt that this would be an outstanding way. This is a model that is unique. Um, using fire stations because fire stations are embedded in communities in the neighborhoods and as you go across uh, our community uh, they are located in, in places where you can get the transit community those that walk uh, so we saw that that was a good success uh, but not only did we test a lot of the residents from East Augusta we also tested residents from Hepsibah residents from citizens from Thompson, Georgia showed up, citizens from Grovetown, citizens from Evans showed up, and citizens from North Augusta actually showed up at Station One to be tested. So uh, Augusta is truly a regional hub, uh, not just in, in government and in operation, but uh, citizens across this area get services from Augusta, Georgia not only their law enforcement, their fire service, and their medical uh, services. A great deal of that comes from the city 
of Augusta and, and businesses and facilities that are located in Augusta, Georgia. And this test showed that by the numbers of people, the cross section from the region that showed up for this testing. Uh, we learned a lot of things from that testing. Um, and so we're going to do another testing next Friday on May 15th at Lamar Millage Elementary School. It was scheduled for <clears throat> it was scheduled for the fire station in on Eve and Ellis, but um, looking at the turnout that we had this weekend, I mean this past Wednesday with the traffic and talking with the, the sheriff's office, uh, we determined that we need to kind of find a, a better location and so that we can better handle those crowds that come in. So we will have a line for those that pre-register and we encourage folks to dial 311 so they can pre-register for the to get the test. Um, when you dial 311 they will guide you to Dr. Goggins team at the health department and they will schedule you uh, for a, a COVID test. Um, and But in addition to that even if you have not registered, we still encourage everyone to show up for a test. We'll just have two different lines this time. So we will have a line that we encourage to come off of Walton Way onto Eve Street that will come in <coughs> and get tested. Uh, they will have appointments and then we'll have another line for those that are walk-ins or just drive-ins that have not set an appointment that will take a little bit more time that they have to fill out a registration form and then fill them and then we will still get them tested. So I will hope that our numbers will go up uh, uh, next Friday, that we'll get more citizens that show up so that they can learn if they're positive or not and what that positive test does is truly help citizens curtail their behavior. If you're asymptomatic and you think that you're okay, then you keep on going out and, and probably maybe spreading it if you're positive and don't know it. But for those citizens that we test, we know that they're positive, it curtails their behavior. Gives them an opportunity to act accordingly and keep everyone else safe as well. Um, with that being said, I pretty much covered all that information, but it was a great success. Um, Please encourage, uh, and, and you, the news media, you guys are definitely our partners in getting this word out. Um, when we showed up uh, this past Wednesday, the testing started at 10, cars started lining up at 8.30. Uh, when, I, when I actually got there, I talked with the sheriff, he had already been there, and that we, we discussed, you know, this is a problem, but this is the kind of problem that it's a good problem. It's a problem that citizens are taking this event seriously. They're listening to what we're saying, as well as listening to what you as the media is putting out, and they're responding accordingly. Uh, and they're showing up to get tested. So please uh, assist us in getting that word out. May 15th, Friday, from 10 to 2, at Lamar Millage Elementary School, 510 Eve Street. If you've pre-registered, please come off of Walton Way down Eve Street and we'll have sheriff deputies to help guide you. Um, then after you get through that line, you'll have fire department, public health, um, Christ Community um, Health Center folks registering you. Uh, and we will have public health nurses as well as Augusta Fire paramedics actually performing the test on you. It will take about, the test go to public health and it will take about 72 hours to get your test results. With that, Mr. Mayor. So as we've always done, we're going to take a few questions. Uh, I do want to echo uh, the incredible work that our first responders have provided. Uh, as you've heard from both our sheriff and our EMA director, our folks have been on the front line since day one. Uh, at the point in time that we began implementing local uh, orders, uh, which took place on March 16th, right after the governor's original order on March 13th, our folks have been front and center uh, addressing this situation, and I couldn't be more proud uh, to have the team that we have here in Augusta. 
and uh, kudos to both of them as leaders uh, for the work that they're doing in this community and more importantly, how we're continuing to keep people safe. I do want to take another note and mention some good stuff that's going on in the community as well. Uh, we, through partnerships with the Golden Harvest Food Bank and the World Central Kitchen, we continue to provide over 25,000 meals, fresh food and meals to families across Augusta and this region. Uh, that's an incredible partnership that we have uh, with Amy Brightman and her team at the Golden Harvest Food Bank and Chef Jose Andreas and the World Central Kitchen uh, who responds to disasters all across the globe in matters like this. Uh, we couldn't be more proud than to have those types of relationships in the community and the incredible work that's being done there. So with that, George, your first question. Walk us through again the reopening. Uh, is, if I want to come pay my taxes, that's going to be the 12th or the 18th? So it's going to be the 18th. Uh, we're going to move employees in starting on the 12th. Uh, those offices, again, 25% of the workforce will be coming in. Uh, on the 18th, an additional 25%. Uh, of the workforce will be coming in, and at that point, we'll be opening our doors to the general public. Now, last Tuesday, uh, Administrator Sims said that uh, we will strongly recommend everybody wear a mask mm -hmm. coming in. Now, you're saying if I'm coming in to go planning an office, I'm a developer, that uh, I'm going to be required to wear a mask. I did. Is it a recommend or a required? We're going we're gonna to require folks to wear a mask. Is there a process in place? Just in case an employee does, forgot to they test positive for coronavirus, mm -hmm. is there a process in place to handle that? There is a process in place. So again, uh, we've been working on this in partnership with our EMA director, and he's going to come forward in just a moment here. But uh, this goes back to the incredible work that we've been spending time talking through this. Uh, we've been having those tabletop conversations to make sure that we have to keep our employees safe. And so uh, there are efforts on the way. Chief James, about how we're going to address that. So yes, our process will be that if you had an employee that uh, tested positive, of course, that employee will be sent home. And they'll be sent under their own doctor's care and be given directions on how to, but they will be sent home at least for 14 days. Uh, at that point, um, we have teams working with our central services department that the area that that employee worked in well, instantly they will come in and sanitize the area and clean the area. We will do some contact tracing to see what employees that this employee worked with or who they were around or what they've done. And at that point, all of those employees will be required to wear masks and all of those employees will be monitored. Their temperatures will be checked about every eight hours or so, at least twice a day to ensure that uh, they're not displaying any symptoms. If they are displaying any symptoms and have not had a test or they just want to take a test, then we will assure that those employees are tested. If they're showing any symptoms, they will have to be tested and uh, released back to work upon the doctor's release. Are there, are there any plans, because you know you're encouraging people to wear masks, are there any plans to provide county residents with masks who don't have access to masks? So we encourage all citizens that will be coming to any of the uh, city facilities that you have masks. If you don't have a mask and show up, then our marshal's office will provide you with a mask. But we encourage you to kind of control our burn rate um, to bring in and wear your own mask. If you don't have a mask, then we will provide a mask for you. But if I come down, I'm not getting in the building if I don't have a mask. George, you're going to come into this building and you're going to have your own mask, so you won't need one that we'll provide. But there are some out there who believe masks spread the germs are not good for you. There's a, there's a many people who believe that. Well, that's completely inconsistent with the CDC's own guidelines on the recommendations. We have, uh, since this pandemic began, uh, and the conversations around the governor's executive orders and our local executive orders, we have followed those guidelines and we will continue to do so. Uh, there's an expectation. We certainly understand the concern that people have, uh, their guidelines. You don't put a mask on a two-year-old because of choking hazards and those things. Uh, but when it comes to uh, elderly populations who do frequent this building, individuals who are coming to pay their taxes, individuals who are coming to get tags, uh, those uh, developers and otherwise who come into this building, 
That's a reasonable expectation that we're going to have, and we're going to codify that and have an expectation that when you come, put on a mask and uh, sanitize your hands when you come through the marshal's uh, step-off pad from a security perspective. So there, there, there is an event scheduled for tonight at 6 p.m. at Diamond mm -hmm. Lake to honor a meeting with Aubrey passed away in Brunswick, mm -hmm. and I believe your wife is actually hosting the event. And okay. they, they expect to have over 100 people. Is it concerning mm -hmm. the fact that there's a lot of people gathering there and mm -hmm. trying to social distance and stuff like that? Well, Joseph, you've asked a very uh, good question. Uh, and to the degree that I think that there is this run for Aubrey conversation that people are having, uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to once again uh, express our profound condolences to uh, the family. Uh, it's a very tragic event. Uh, it's a very tragic event that has happened uh, in this community uh, in Brunswick, uh, a community that I know well. Uh, I know the mayor uh, well. And uh, I'm pleased to see uh, GBI uh, Director Vic Reynolds move very swiftly uh, with uh, conducting an investigation, but more importantly, arresting the perpetrators. I think that has brought a level of calm to that community. And so to the degree that there is any level of convening a conversation that will take place, uh, and if Augusta's First Lady is involved in that, uh, she fully understands and knows that those things can only happen if people provide uh, one safe social distancing. And if people are showing up with masks, uh, it's my understanding that she was contacted by some other community partners and stakeholders uh, to have a broad conversation about that. Uh, but make no mistake about it, Augusta's First Lady will follow the same guidelines and expectations that we're iterating here. Uh, and again, with our first responders and law enforcement monitoring those situations, uh, I don't anticipate anything uh, being out of pocket as it relates to that. Chair, on the 14th, you said the, the bars are going to reopen and you warned or contacted bar. What are the, the rules in bars when, uh, I mean, are they going to have to be 10, six feet apart? Now, this may come a shock to you, but sometimes when you're in a bar, you're, you're not thinking straight, and, and people are not social distancing now. You get into a bar, how are you going to, I mean, are people going to have to be six feet apart in a bar? What are those rules you're telling the bars that they have to follow? Well, I don't have a specific one in front of me, but the guidelines that come from the governor's office, I was just mostly going to be to the fact of the social distancing and also uh, occupancy capacity. That's that's going to be our main issue. Now, by getting with these bar owners ahead of time, um, some of them have reiterated the fact that they will remove some stools so they're not side-by-side -side tables, those nature. So those measures uh, we think will be extremely helpful, but I'm sure we will get, and this again, if the governor does or not, in fact, uh, extend his order. We're just going by the existing order as it does now in anticipation of that. But our main concern again will be the occupancy which we we really anticipate a high volume of people returning, especially to the Broad Street area because it has been closed for so long and because it's just during the summer it, it is a hub for visitors anyway. Um, so that is going to be our main concern that we're not going to um, have a large capacity of individuals, especially anywhere near of the maximum capacity for the bar. And again, when I said we're going to close them down, we went for that evening so they can get everything straight. It's not going to be a permanent unless, again, we see some kind of fire code violation or some willful um, blatant disregard for public safety. Um, that's why we're working with them now for the fact that we don't want to have to. Um, we want them to continue to thrive and, and provide their service, um, but it has to be in a safe manner. If we need to close it for that night until they can get in compliance and come back and try it again the next night, then we're more than happy to work with them. You may direct the change that's uh, more to add to that. Yeah, um, our, our fire marshals, our fire prevention officers on that, that night of that 14th will be out as well to assist uh, the law enforcement folks with uh, the occupancy load questions or uh, concerns uh, to assure that in reopening that uh, we don't have that issue of overcrowded and clubs uh, or bars. Uh, there is some bars, restaurants, there are some, I don't have it in front of me as well as the sheriff has said, but there are some specific guidance as to how many folks can be at a table uh, that came from the governor's office and how you should be spread out. And so those are the things that we will be prepared to 
uh, work with law enforcement and assist in uh, carrying out the, the governor's instructions on that evening. Chief, I think like you have fire occupancy maximum at 100. We say, I'm not sure if the guidelines are, but the guidelines might say only 50, something like that. Right, right. And, and, and so, yeah, and so, um, you know, their occupancy is supposed to be posted. Um, and, and so they should be able to simply, you know, look at their own occupancy load, well, cut that number in half. And but we're going to strictly follow the guidelines that the governor has put out and uh, assist in, uh, it's, it'll be a lot of clubs that may open up and we understand that. And, um, but we'll be out there uh, working with the sheriff's office to assist in uh, making sure we keep Augusta safe. So the uh, final question, but uh, again, both uh, Sheriff Roundtree and Director James have been very spot on in terms of that. Let me reiterate for the general public, those of you who may be wondering, uh, the day of May 13th is when the governor's order as it relates to bars and nightclubs, operators of amusement park rides, live performance venues, and public swimming pools, uh, that order will expire unless extended. And on 14 May, those businesses have an opportunity to open consistent with the guidelines that have already been provided by the governor, that they will do so uh, with the goal of 50% occupancy. Uh, not the normal occupancy, but the number is 50%. So again, if you were a uh, 100 occupancy facility, uh, you're gonna have 50% less than that as you open up. Uh, we're gonna be very uh, diligent in terms of monitoring that. I wanna iterate to the public and in particular our business community. Uh, it is not our goal to close businesses. Uh, Augusta has enjoyed uh, a very business friendly and robust economy over the last five years. We want to see that continue. And in order to do that, we have got to continue to be good partners in that process. We are not looking for opportunities to add additional or onerous regulations in this, uh, but we are in fact wanting people to be safe. And so we'll continue to uh, take uh, what the governor has provided us. Uh, do understand that all of these regulations and our guidelines that we are seeing deployed in the state of Georgia and in Augusta, they come from the governor's office. They're not coming from the mayor's office. I want to be very clear about that. Uh, at the point in time that we have to put in place additional orders from a local Augusta perspective, uh, we will do so. Uh, but understanding that we're not able to do that until after June 12th. And so until that time, we're all following the governor's executive orders and we want to keep people safe. And so with that, uh, thank you all for your time on today, and uh, we look forward to being back with you hopefully on next week. Is Friday going to be your day, or can we change to another day for you? Well, uh, the governor has been moving around, so uh, we're trying to make and sure that. you've been holding these your deals on Friday. Well, because he talks on Thursday. Oh. I don't want to come and say something, and then he say something different. So that's why we've chosen Fridays as our, as our kind of standard day right now. Had he stuck to Tuesday, we would have stuck to Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything, he left the shelter in place. I mean, is there anything Not for the vulnerable stop? populations. Okay. That shelter in place remains for vulnerable. there's nothing to stop a gang of 20 people gathering together anymore, right? Uh, there's nothing to stop that other than the governor's guidelines said that if you are out in public, you must maintain safe social distancing and you cannot congregate in groups larger than 10. That's in there? That's in there. That's absolutely in there. Okay. Absent being able to provide safe social distancing, you cannot congregate in groups larger than 10. That is still in there. Distance. Unless you have a capa the capa capacity to social distance. That's correct. Then you could have 40 people together as long as they're all six feet apart. As long as they're all six feet apart, north, south, east, and west. The star has to be maintained.